They gave me the boys toy instead of the girl toy in the Happy Meal. Let's see. Let's look at why woke comedians aren't funny. We got. We're gonna find something. We're gonna find guys. P P Nation. We are gonna find something fun to watch. To the transgender community, I am more than willing to give you an audience, but I have some conditions. You must admit that Hannah Gatsby is not funny. That that is a dog made entirely out of crayons. I don't need that. Ha ha ha. Wasn't that funny. Gee, if she didn't constantly reassure me that she's a good comedian, I might have forgotten to laugh there. That's yeah, I mean, she's almost as unfunny as fucking Dave Chappelle has become. You know what I mean? Any true pee heads out there? How I'm going to meet your expectations by adjusting them for you. Now yeah, th this guy is, uh, the guy who did this is, is Think Before You Sleep. Uh, his videos are really bad and really lazy, but he also sounds like uh, Nile Red. If any of you guys know Nile Red, like the science channel, he's like the fucking incel version of that. He's evil Nile Red. Nile Blue. <laughs> I don't know. Now. So they are exactly what you're gonna get. And then I'll meet them and you go, she's very good. And yes, I am, but I cheat. Is that a laugh track in the background or does she have a sign telling the audience when to laugh like they do on game shows and sitcoms? Because I cannot fathom that people think this is actually funny. And trust me, it's not any better in context. Though my expectations were met. Dave Chappelle made a very bold statement calling out Hannah Gatsby as not funny. Well, after watching both of her Netflix specials, Nanette and Douglas, which have a runtime of over two hours, I did not laugh out loud once. The best she got out of me was a slight smirk from this joke here. Now, fair warning, my observations will be about Americans, which is broadly speaking you lot, right? So, and, and sorry, but making fun of Americans is still technically punching up, although that window is closing. Um... That was her best joke out of two hours. And don't give me the, you don't think she's funny because she has different political beliefs. That's what right-wingers say about Dave Chappelle all the time. <laughs> like... That's not the case. Laughter is involuntary. If someone says something really funny, you will laugh whether you want to or not. That's a horrible argument. Like, if you already, like, resent this person, and you're already on the side of someone who, like, is openly shitting on them in public, like, you probably aren't gonna find them funny because of your predispositions. <laughs> Alien Man Explains Laughter. Why there are, like, a million You Laugh, You Lose challenges <coughs> on YouTube. I've also featured comedians on my channel, like Veer Das, who I very much disagree with on certain issues, yet when he told jokes about those very things, I still laughed. There's a reason why woke comedians aren't funny, and there's a reason why woke television shows and woke movies aren't good. It's because the people who create this stuff don't care about the audience. I love the argument that comes from like this hyper individualistic like it's like a entitlement. It's an entitlement for like the per the creator needs to like consider me, and that's what makes something good. That's why Star Wars is bad now because they don't care about the fans. And it's like, no, like nothing was made with an audience in mind. The best kind of things were made because they stand on their own. If no one were to watch them, they'd still be good. Like, I don't understand. Nice city wallpaper that doesn't connect with the video. Yeah, like he calls like react content lazy and then will fucking like all of his content is just like talking over like city landscapes. To elaborate more, but first, if you like the content you see on this channel, then consider making a donation. Viewer support helps keep me independent and it helps fund the channel. Don't Links do to it. My PayPal. Since people have already talked about Amy Schumer's gross genital comedy and her not being funny like a million times, I've decided to use Hannah Gatsby to make my point. For those of you who I guess I just don't get it. Not him asking for a donation. Yeah, I know. Like it's so hard for right wing channels on YouTube. They like basically have a built in audience already and constantly get put up and blasted in the fucking algorithm. And uh, oh, this only has 2.1 million views, meaning he probably made close to $20,000 off of this. But it's just so hard for channels like this. Please donate to me. You who don't know, Hannah Gatsby is an art graduate from Australia who aired out a little drama between her, Netflix, and Dave Chappelle on Instagram. Now that you're all caught up, let's continue talking about why she's not funny and why these woke shows keep failing. I think he's using text-to-speech. He's not. And it will also include a fair dose and 
of what I call a gentle and very good natured needling of the patriarchy. So that is in there. So it's very important. It's very important that you expect that because it is there. And if that's not your thing, leave. I've given you plenty of warning. It's like my favorite thing about libs, right? My favorite fucking liberal moment is like, yo, I'm doing this thing. I'm really sticking it to the to this patriarchy. I'm fucking, I'm doing this, but I'm doing the thing. And it's like, okay, but like most people just like do it. And there's like obviously no like, there's no like material analysis. There's no like understanding of how the patriarchy affects like economic impact, for example. Like you can still make jokes about stuff like that. Like you can still talk about that, but it's always like, you know, the most like sanitized and like fucking perfect, perfectly fucking rounded off, like marketable kind of phrasing, I guess, whatever. Fuck it. Rule number one of building a huge audience. <laughs> Don't alienate a large portion of people by telling them to not watch your show. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't alienate a bunch of people by saying that you don't like Nazis. Rule number one. The woke crowd seems to love doing this by saying, if you don't like it, don't watch. Or, this show is not for you every time one of their awful shows fails. Clearly, Hannah's Netflix specials were not made with the audience and potential audience in mind because they aren't good. That being said, I th that doesn't make any sense. Like you can't cater to everyone. I remember when this guy made Hassan genuinely depressed. Yeah, I bet this dude is a brony. <laughs> yeah, the right says that all the time too. I think her special Douglas best illustrates how little she is actually interested in what the audience's preferences are. Here's how that special starts. So that's what's gonna happen before the show even begins, right? I'm going to give you a very detailed blow by blow description of exactly how the show is going to unfold. Now this setting of expectations does go on a bit. I've had to cut the actual show in order to fit it in. Yes, that's what everyone wants when they go to a comedy performance, a syllabus that spoils all the jokes. This that's not what it does though, obviously. This was a very college professor way of writing a comedy special, but okay. There are two major problems with this design. One, people hate spoilers. <laughs> Uh, yes, dude, please analyze comedy for me. Please analyze a stand-up show. Remember back in 2019 when everyone and Marvel was like, seriously, we will kill you if you spoil Avengers Endgame. Remember how big of a deal it was when Mark Ruffalo spoiled Infinity War? Badly Wait till you see this next one. Hard. Everybody dies. Dude, 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 dude. Not everybody. No. Is that? No. Alien, whatever. Can we rewind that part? Yeah. yeah. Can we, then am I in trouble? <laughs> Someone in the comments said that he actually spoiled Endgame during this interview as well. But the point is, people don't like spoilers. This was a particularly stupid move from Hannah because <laughs> getting people to laugh is all about surprise. Unless I've already heard the joke and approved of it in the past, if I can predict what you're- George Carlin had bits where he would like talk about like, in this show we're gonna be talking about tits and dicks and ass and fucking shit and people thought it was hilarious. I will give you no input and I will expect no feedback. I'm going to say, it's not funny. Like this joke. And you also need to expect one Louis C.K. joke. Now I only have one joke, that wasn't it by the way, the show hasn't started, we're still in the prelude. The one joke, it's very good, I only need one. It's a good, it was a good joke, it was a day off. I'm so solid on Louis C.K. joke. It's a mic drop moment. The interesting thing about the Louis C.K. joke is that it happens very late in the show. So late you will have forgotten that I told you to expect a Louis C.K. joke. There's Hannah kissing her own ass again. There's no better sign of someone who's bad at something than a person who constantly insists that they are good. He doesn't understand that that's the joke. He doesn't understand that it's a running joke that you tell a couple of times. Uh, so there's this thing that I've noticed. It happens to a lot of my friends um, and it happens just to people in general. But when anyone who's not a cis man makes a joke on the internet, a lot of people just think it's not a joke and will like step in to like correct them. Interesting little phenomena. Unfortunately, the Louis CK joke is not YouTube friendly, so I can't show it. <laughs> what a pussy. What a pussy. I bet it's funny. I bet it's funny, especially with all the buildup. My last show, Nanette, gave a lot of people the puff of fish. Like, you know you've made it. And I say people, but it was only men. <laughs> Hashtag not all men, okay? 
Of course, it's not all men. It's never been all men. Generally speaking, it's really only the men who use that hashtag. They're the ones, you know, men, pronouns, me. You know, they're, they're the ones who go out of their way to let me know that Nanette was not comedy. Because it didn't make me laugh every step of the way. First of all, good. If that show made you laugh all the way through, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Secondly, yes, I turned the laugh tap off myself. It was a decision, I stand by it. It's not like I got halfway through the show and thought, fuck, I'm out of jokes, I'll, be I'll tell a sad story. I hope I won't notice. <laughs> Look, I know better than anyone that what I did with the net was not technically comedy. But I'm also not a fucking idiot. I'm <laughs> it's also, like, she's fine. I don't, I don't see the problem here. But also, like, Dave Chappelle has a stand-up special that's not comedy. I think it's The Bird Theory. He just, like, tells a story for the most of it about uh, a book that he read about Iceberg Slim. That's, it wasn't comedy. He was just like, telling a story. George Carlin has tons of hours of stand-up where he's just talking about the state of the country. Like, he's not, like, doing comedy. He's just, like, giving a, like, long lecture. Comedy doesn't, like, f always follow fucking one format. However, I can tell you that it was totally expected because she said it was in the show and then challenged me by saying I would forget about it. Guess what? I didn't forget. And That's when it a does joke, finally though. show up, this great Louis C.K. joke at the end, it's like three seconds, and if you looked away from the screen during the instant that she said the joke, it would completely fly over your head. If it's three seconds, how is it really like not YouTube safe? But anyway, what was interesting about that is like Dave Chappelle has all kinds of like Dave Chappelle ends every special with a fucking callback joke. That's how you end a good special. You don't just end a special like in the middle of a joke. I mean, Brendan Schaub did that. I saw him live in L.A. <laughs> the second problem with this intro is a problem that has plagued the entertainment industry for years, which is stories that include no intro hook. A hook oh is something that the audience will find interesting. There are many ways to hook an audience depending on the type of entertainment medium that you're using to convey your message, but Hannah spends the first 14 minutes of the special introducing herself and spoiling all of her jokes. This is not entertaining. That's it. That's the show. That's everything you can expect. Expectations have been set, so the show starts now. It should have started when you walked out on stage. This he doesn't get it. Life. He doesn't get, he doesn't understand that the long setup is the joke. Obama. Reminds me of the new Dune movie because this was actually my biggest issue with it. <laughs> it's the first of like three movies. <laughs> he doesn't understand. The first 20 minutes of that movie was a giant exposition dump where nothing yeah. entertaining occurs until Paul puts his hand into a box. But if they didn't explain anything, nothing would make sense, asshole. Seriously, I've gotten so pissed at movies doing this that I will actually set a timer to see how long it takes for the movie to start. I believe the first Venom movie was the worst <laughs> offender because it didn't start until... <laughs> this guy would be the kind of guy to watch the first Venom movie. Until almost half the movie was over. What? It's especially annoying in this what what is his marker for when a movie starts is there like any backstory at all like the movie's not started yet come on case with a story like dune that has a 600 page manuscript that you can just cheat off of there's a reason why frank herbert started the book with the scene where paul puts his hand into a box it's called an intro hook but like movies and books can't be written the same way it's just not possible to write a movie the exact same way as a book and there's so much exposition in the first Dune book, dude. As you just said, it's 600 pages. Like, there wasn't filler in Dune. There's no filler in that movie. You need to make the audience care about your story before you dump a bunch of information on them about how your world works. Telling the audience, no, seriously, you need to memorize all this stuff before you have earned an interesting scene, is selfish writing. The great thing about putting your hand into a box is that people can understand that scene without tons of backstory. Not to say the movie didn't do a good job with that moment, it's actually a really good scene with a very good theatrical depiction of the Jedi mind control thing they call the voice, but the director should have started with it. Currently, I think it's the best film depiction of Dune so far, but when you don't start with interesting stuff- I just love that. It's the best film depiction of Dune so far. All right, man, there's one other. I'm gonna be right back. I gotta get a drink. I can't handle this fucking guy anymore. I can't handle this kind of stuff, man. Yeah, when will this YouTube video start, asshole? I'm People back. People will ignore the exposition dump you gave them at the start, so they will find the rest of the movie confusing. 
Speaking of confusion, that brings me to my next point about Hannah Gatsby's woke comedy specials. Multiple times during her specials, her jokes are so poorly thought out that she has to explain them to the audience. <laughs> you know, for a long time I knew more facts about unicorns than I did about lesbians. Another reason I struggled with co there are no facts about unicorns. If you have to explain the joke, it's not funny. The problem It's part of the joke, man. It's part of the joke. It's part of the delivery. Like <laughs> with this joke is that it can be easily interpreted multiple ways that kill the humor. It's possible to have facts about fictional characters. For example, unicorns are fictional horses. Fact. Or if you This dude is fucking Dwight from the office. <laughs> This guy sucks at segues, yeah. You want to be super into this guy probably this guy probably hates autistic people because he probably is autistic, and that's probably why you didn't understand the fucking humor in this fucking shit. Intellectual, you could have interpreted it as the old definition of unicorn, which is an animal with a single horn like a rhino. So then the joke would completely fall flat because rhinos are real. Here's another example. I'm actually like so confused. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Oh, I got fucking stick bugged. There's 30 seconds forward. We got stick bugged. Then you need to rewrite it. But people like Hannah are not going to get that because they actively avoid or ignore criticism. For example, people criticized Hannah's first Netflix special in the net for being a lecture. And then with said jousting stick, I'm going to set about tearing my hate as a new asshole. Yep, quick as you like, brand spanking new. And the way that I'll do that is by doing exactly what my haters accused me of doing, which is lecturing you. So in the middle of the show, I'm giving you a big old lecture. This is a valid criticism of that special because a vast portion of it contains zero jokes and it was written that way on purpose. The best part about this criticism is that it's not political. It's not, I don't agree with that joke you said because I have different politics. Instead, it's a critique of her writing technique, which means it's something that applies to every comedian. But instead of listening to that criticism, she leans into it and makes the terrible mistake of purposefully designing her second special like a lecture. Again, George Carlin had specials that were basically lectures and so has Dave Chappelle. I mean, his new sh specials are literally just lectures on why he's right and trans people are weird. Does he ever show his face? Of course not. Absolutely not. How feminist ideas make everyone weak. How people are being radicalized. Oh my god. This is an hour and 40 minute video talking about how much he doesn't like Hassan. I mean, his first fucking Hassan video did not pop off in the way it probably should have for him. The people who ruined Twitter. God, this guy's so pathetic. Honestly, how's it going boys? Welcome back to Mogul Mail. In this video, we're going to talk about women. Stick around to the end because we're going to solve sexism in this video. Now, I haven't posted in a couple weeks because nothing's inspired me, but I saw a tweet from It's Timmy, the Apex Legends <laughs> God and good friend of the stream. Oh, dude, he pulled out so many fucking landscape pictures for this one. Oh, my God. I think this might be... This might be a sub goal or something. Like if we get like fucking 300 subs or something, I'll watch this. M watch the most replayed part. Oh no, it's right here. An idiot in this lobby, I can tell you that. Oh, mean. I was gonna compliment you, but never mind. E-girl is not a compliment, sorry. I understand that e-girl has a negative connotation to it, but it can also, to some people, just mean a girl who streams. Instead <laughs> no, of waiting it for to clarify which definition he was using. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Jordan Adika ruined Twitter because of Stuart Little dick posts. Like now or a while ago? Because that was a minute ago. Off topic, how long do you boil pierogies? Any pierogi heads in the chat? Oh my god, he's talking about Lacey Green, Chris Raygun. Oh god. This dude is not... That, that shit was like five years ago and it was so fucking god damn dude what a loser okay i don't know man if we if we hit like a bunch of subs maybe we can watch the fucking two hour think before you sleep video